During the Second Boer War, British troops armed with the 303 caliber magazine Long Lee Enfield Mark I rifle and the Lee Medford rifle faced accurate long-range fire from over 600 yards away produced by the Boer commandos of the Orange Free State and the Transvaal. British soldiers not only used the volley fire technique to suppress enemy activity, but also the single shot engagement tactic from a rifle with eight reserve rounds in its magazine. Yet their marksmanship skills paled in contrast to the Boers, who were not trained soldiers but were well armed, accomplished substance hunters. Prior to British imperial hostilities, both independent states secured thousands of weapons from German factories. However, much of the Boers' success to prolong Britain's inevitable conquest of the South African states was owed to the firepower and proven accuracy of the rimless 7x57mm Mauser high-velocity cartridge chambered in the 1893 Spanish and 1895 Chilean Mauser rifles. Paul Mauser's revolutionary rifles made a name for themselves in all conflicts they were deployed to. Following the hard-learned lessons of deadly marksmanship and innovative weapon designs, Great Britain's Small Arms Committee was set up in 1900 to consider plans for the Empire's armament moving forward into the 20th century. Although the number 1 Mark I short magazine Lee Enfield rifle replaced the obsolete charger loading magazine system of the long Lee Enfield in 1902, the committee was still considering to develop another service rifle in a smaller caliber. In 1910, Birmingham Small Arms developed an experimental rimless cartridge for British ordnance consideration with higher velocity and flatter trajectory than the 303 British, the 276 Enfield. Two years later, the Royal Small Arms Factory, borrowing heavily on Mauser's forward locking lugs, one piece stock, and separate upper handguard with a heavier barrel, developed an experimental rifle in 276 Enfield, the British pattern 1913 service rifle. The Pattern 1913 rifle was a modified Mauser bolt-action rifle. Unlike the other rifles of its time, the bolt handle was purposely built crooked so the shooter could operate the action quicker. And unlike the Mauser rifle, the Pattern 1913 was fixed with the height sight design folding aperture rear sight assembly within the upper bridge of the rear receiver. Production of the Pattern 1913 rifle by the Vickers Armstrong Company of Westminster, London was limited to a few rifles in 276 Enfield, and when Great Britain entered the Great War in 1914, British ordnance then decided to alter the experimental rifle to handle the proven 303 British, developing the Enfield No. 3 rifle. Great Britain was in dire needs for more weapons to arm its troops heading for France. Though the pattern 1914 rifle was adopted to augment the No. 1 Mark III Star, there were still no manufacturing facilities in Great Britain to build the new weapon. British government representatives, in order to produce the new weapon, turned to the United States government to seek contracts with commercial firearm manufacturers. The Remington Arms Company of Delaware, Remington Arms Union Metallic Cartridge Company of Ilion, New York, and the Winchester Repeating Arms Company of New Haven, Connecticut, accepted contracts in 1914 to manufacture the new rifle. By September 21, 1916, approximately 1.2 million pattern 1914 rifles were manufactured before production contracts were canceled. U.S. production ceased because Great Britain's arsenals and factories were able to adequately produce the Lee Enfield rifles for service. In April 1916, the Imperial German government announced that it would restrain submarine warfare in order to give passenger ships safe passage. Woodrow Wilson proclaimed in his speech to Congress on April 2, 1917, that their restraint was just precautions taken which were meager and haphazard enough. For almost a year until mid-February 1917, as the submarines were practicing restraint, ships of all kind continued to be sunk. On April 2, Wilson, acting in unhesitating obedience, asked Congress to declare war against the German Empire. 
Following America's entry into the Great War on April 6, the U.S. War Department quickly realized that all its resources to bring the government of the German Empire to terms and end the war was not sufficient enough to equip servicemen of the rapidly expanding American Expeditionary Forces. There were approximately 600,000 U.S. Rifle Caliber 30 Model 1903 Springfields and around 160,000 U.S. Craig Rifles in the arsenal. Rock Island Arsenal had stopped producing the Model 1903 Springfield in 1913, four years before America's entry into the European War. Though Springfield Armory and Rock Island Arsenal were set up to produce the Model 1903 Springfield, due to a skilled labor and raw material shortage, neither could not turn out the rifle and the large quantities needed to arm American servicemen. The War Department even considered outsourcing the production of the Model 1903 Springfield to commercial firearm companies. However, without sufficient time to find suitable manufacturers to contract with to build the weapon, to train a new workforce, and to procure raw materials to assemble the weapon on machinery not readily available, other avenues were sought to arm the millions of doughboys heading to Europe. Thankfully, the plans, workforce, materials, and equipment to manufacture the pattern 1914 rifle was already, for the most part, on hand for the mass production of it as a substitute standard issue service rifle. Since the official military rifle cartridge was the ball cartridge caliber 30 model 1906, the idea to equip American servicemen with the 303 British rifle as is was not acceptable, as it would have complicated ammunition supplies. Plans were drawn up to modify the pattern 1914 rifle to handle the 30 6 Springfield in order to supply only one cartridge for all issued rifles. In early May 1917, the Ordnance Department gave the modified rifle its official nomenclature, the United States Rifle Caliber 30 model of 1917. Conversion from 303 British to 306 Springfield was relatively a minor issue which early manufactured model 1917 rifles faced. Unlike the Model 1903 Springfield, the Model 1917 rifle was not produced by government-owned and operated arsenals. Remington Arms, its subsidiary company Eddystone, and Winchester were commercial companies that were contracted by the government to mass-produce the rifle. On May 10th, these companies submitted experimental samples of their manufactured Model 1917 rifle to Springfield Armory inspectors for evaluation and testing. The main issue which the Model 1917 rifle faced from its initial production to its termination two days before armistice was the lack of full interchangeability of its parts with other manufacturers' similar rifle, since some components remained hand-fitted. Even with the pressing need for rifles, the Ornance Department rejected their samples, instructing the companies to improve their production and assembly techniques for the sake of interchangeable components before going into mass production. Two months later, on July 12th, the companies then submitted their second experimental samples. Inspectors again discovered that some components were still non-interchangeable. However, this time the Ornance Department approved mass production and allowed the companies to work on the interchangeability problems during manufacturing. Winchester proceeded with production of the Model 1917 rifle, making its first initial delivery of the weapon on August 18th. Remington Arms and Eddystone opted to wait until a standardized manufacturing plan between the companies was completed. On October 1st, the Ornance Department accepted the Model 1917 rifles manufactured by Eddystone. Remington Arms followed on October 28th. Retooling to manufacture the pattern 1914 rifle in 30 6 Springfield changed standard rifling specifications. Even though the bore diameter was reduced, the Model 1917 rifle, unlike the Model 1903 Springfield, has a five-groove left-hand twist, which is the same as the pattern 1914 rifling. Due to converting to a cartridge which produced higher pressures within the chamber, engineers added 3.5% nickel steel into the Model 1917's receiver and bolt. As a modified Mauser, the Model 1917 rifle has a charger clip slot milled into the upper bridge of the rear receiver for the quick reloading of five cartridges. While the Model 1903 Springfield holds five cartridges in the internal box magazine, 
the Model 1917 rifle can actually hold six cartridges. This is due to the difference of headspace between the RIM 303 British and the RIMless 30 6 Springfield. Traditional Mauser rifle designs cock the action on opening. Conversely, the Model 1917's action cocks on closing, just like the Lee Enfield rifles. At the time, this was widely criticized by those accustomed with the prior operation. Though not as popular, an action that cocks on closing requires less effort to operate. The Model 1917 rifle kept the Mauser influence bolt stop assembly so that the bolt may be removed from the receiver. Unlike traditional Mauser rifle designs, where the safety lock assembly is on the bolt behind the bolt sleeve, the Model 1917 rifle instead has a manual safety lock catch, which is on the right hand side of the receiver just behind the crooked bolt. Unlike the US Krag rifle and Model 1903 Springfield, the Model 1917 rifle does not have a magazine cutoff system. The Model 1917 rifle, for the most part, kept the high rear sight assembly, which is protected by a wing guard at the top of the bridge on the rear of the receiver. However, the rear sight ladder is graduated from 200 to 1600 yards instead. By depressing the sight slide catch, the shooter can operate the slide on the ladder, fixing the diamond serrated peep sight to a desired graduation. While the Model 1905 rear sight assembly on the Model 1903 Springfield can be adjusted for windage with the turn of the simple windage index knob, the Model 1917 rifle's rear sight cannot be adjusted for windage. Windage adjustments can be made by Kentucky windage or by tapping the front sight post to the left or right and a dovetail which is milled into the front sight carrier. Instead of altering the Model 1917 rifle's upper band with the bayonet lug to fit the U.S. bayonet Model 1905, the setup for the pattern 1913 bayonet remained. Given the nomenclature, U.S. bayonet Model 1917, a stud slot was added through the palm mill and by September 1917, both Remington Arms and Winchester started new U.S. production of the Model 1917 bayonet. Though the Model 1917 bayonets are stamped with the Ordnance Department accepting markings, they are not serialized. Doughboys prefer the Model 1903 Springfield to the Model 1917 rifle because of its lighter weight and better handling characteristics. The Model 1917 rifle, nonetheless, proved itself to be a sturdy and reliable weapon during the war, even though it is not as accurate as the Model 1903 Springfield and the rifle's short term of service, Doughboys gained experience with it, and over the course of the war there were fewer complaints about having an American Enfield rather than the old 19 Springfield. By November 11, 1918, some 1.12 million Model 1917 rifles had been shipped to France. It is estimated that 75% of American Expeditionary Force was armed with the rifle. Up to the War Department's termination of the contracts two days before armistice, approximately 2.19 million Model 1917 rifles were produced. Further rifles were assembled by spare parts into 1919. Even though there were a larger number of Model 1917 rifle in inventory following the Great War, the Model 1903 Springfield remained the standard issue U.S. military service rifle. Some Model 1917 rifles went into storage in national arsenals, while a large number were subsequently sold to the National Rifle Association members through the Director of the Civilian Marksmanship Program. 
the model of 1917 rifles, life and service didn't entirely end following November 1918. For the defense of the island empire, the passage of the Lend-Lease Act of 1941 allowed the rifle to be sold to Great Britain. In World War II, the High Standard and Manufacturing Corporation produced four groove barrels, and Johnson Automatics produced two groove barrels for the rifle which saw service again stateside as a training rifle. Unlike the barrels manufactured for the Model 1917 rifle, during the Great War, both companies produced barrels with a right-hand twist to the Model 1903 Springfield rifling specifications. Issued to augment production of the Model 1903 Springfield, the Model 1917 rifle's glory days were all too brief, ending with armistice. In a 1919 report issued by Assistant Secretary of War Benedict Crowell, the Ordnance Department's modification of the pattern 1914 to accept the U.S. service cartridge was one of the great decisions of the executive prosecution of the war. All honor to the men who made it. In a pinch for weaponry, the U.S. rifle, caliber 30, model 1917, answered the call, performing admirably for the nation as a substitute standard issue service rifle to the United States rifle, caliber 30, model 1903.